Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again today here on NeuroPsyQ. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Basically, we are a channel that talks about topics in the neurosciences each week. And what we do is we help you increase your neuroscience IQ. So, in particular, today we are going to be talking about mindfulness and meditation. And while you may have heard things about these topics, such as the fact that mindfulness can induce feelings of calmness, it can help promote relaxation, reduce anxiety and stress, maybe you've even heard that meditation can help you increase your focus and cognition. Today we are going to be talking about some of these things and we're also going to be looking at the topic from a neuroscientific view in that we're going to look at the effects meditation has on the brain and we're also going to look at whether or not meditation can have long lasting effects on the brain in terms of structure and also function. So sit tight and stay tuned because we are going to look at the neuroscience behind this practice. Before we get started, I just want to briefly introduce two of the technologies that are used in some of the studies that we're going to be talking about today. The first one is EEG, and that is electroencephalography. I've talked about this before in some of our other videos, but just to recap, EEG is a technology in which electrodes are placed over the skull and these pick up signals from the neurons particularly on the surface of the cortex and so it produces different waves depending on the state of the person so for instance alpha waves would be produced when somebody is awake and at rest so if you're sitting with your eyes closed you'll be producing alpha waves while beta waves are produced when somebody is more actively awake and then we also have gamma waves, which are seen during focus. And finally, there are delta and theta waves, which are seen in slow wave sleep and sleeping in general, with the uh, delta waves being more common in dreaming or deeper sleep. The second technology I want to talk about is fMRI. And fMRI is a technology that's magnetic resonance imaging. And so what this does is, fMRI or functional MRI looks at the blood flow within the brain and so we can use blood flow to kind of hint at which areas of the brain are being more active because the areas which are more active need more oxygen so more blood is supplied to them and so when we look at blood flow it can help us to figure out which areas are activated. With these two technologies scientists are able to look at what is going on when somebody is meditating. So now before we go even deeper into looking at what's happening in the brain during meditation, first of all I want to talk about what mindfulness is and what meditation is. So mindfulness is described as a type of attention and so this is a type of attention in which somebody is focusing on the present moment in a non-judgmental way without thinking about anything else they have to do in the future, things they've done in the past, just be really being in the present. Meditation is a practice to promote mindfulness. And so there are actually different types of meditation, but what they all work towards is hopefully increasing mindfulness. And mindfulness can actually be measured with questionnaires that have been developed. And the different types of meditation are hopefully working towards increasing mindfulness or this particular state of attention. So now, what is actually happening when people are meditating? Well, first of all, with functional magnetic resonance imaging, scientists have looked at the brain areas that are activated while people meditate, and they've seen an increase in the activation of the insula, and the insula is a region that is shown to be involved with interception they see a decrease in the amount of activity in the medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex. These two areas together encompass what is known as the DMN or default mode network and this is the network that is activated when people are distracted 
for instance, when they have mind wandering going on, or when they are thinking of previous memories, etc, etc. Basically, they're not on task. So, when people are meditating, there's some sort of cycle that is happening. And this cycle starts off with them being focused. While they are focused, there's activity in the prefrontal cortex. One example of a meditative practice is bringing attention to the breath and focusing on that. Now, for a little while, the prefrontal cortex will be active as the person is focusing on their breath. But we can't do that forever, and so what happens is mind wandering. In this instance, that's when you see the regions of the posterior cingulate cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex lighting up as the individual is distracted. Now, when we are distracted, we at some point become aware of the fact that we're off task, and so at this moment, that is when the insula lights up as the person is aware of their internal state. Finally, they return their attention and they shift it back to their breath, and that would be when the prefrontal cortex is lighting up again, as well as parietal regions with the shift in attention. So what has been seen is that with meditation, there is an increased ability of people to be internally aware of their states. So by training the insula to focus on when we have shifts in attention that are unwanted, this can be beneficial and it's actually been shown that meditating can help people quit habits. And I know it's cliche, but a lot of people here, therapists say that realizing you have a problem is the first step. So with meditation, when you become eternally aware, you can become aware of these issues or habits you have that might be detrimental and find ways to fix them. A step further was taken and there was a study conducted in which experienced meditators, so people who had been meditating for their whole lives practically, and non-experienced meditators were looked at in an fMRI. Now during this study, the people were notified if they were off task or if their attention had shifted. So when the experimenter noticed that the focus had shifted and the DMN network was activated, particularly by looking at the PCC lighting up, they notified the patient that they were mind wandering. What happened was the individuals who were experienced meditators were able to shift their attention back faster and they actually experienced less mind wandering as the task carried on. So they were notified that they were mind wandering, they shifted back, and they stayed back in focused attention for the remainder of the task. People who were not experienced with meditating actually would shift back and forth, and as the experimenter would tell them, they could shift their attention back to where it needed to be, but the mind wandering started again. And so this showed that individuals who didn't meditate habitually had problems staying focused, whereas those who were experienced meditators were able to regain their focus and keep focus throughout the task. In terms of EEG recordings, what was seen is that all the individuals start with their beta waves. They're in their awake state, their active mind, and the waves seen across the board are the same for all people who are in an awake state, and those are our typical beta waves. As soon as meditation begins, both experienced and non-experienced meditators fall into what is known as alpha waves, and these are for our awake but resting state of mind. Those who are experienced meditators were able to instigate gamma waves as well, and so these are the waves seen when we are engaging in focus, and so for instance solving a math problem, something like that, would instigate gamma waves, and experienced meditators can actually focus on their internal state and the present moment with such precision that they instigate gamma waves. But across the board, most people fall into the alpha waves, and so they're falling into these lower frequency, lower synchronicity, lower amplitude waves.
Now, of course, you're probably wanting to know what the long-term effects of meditating are. And so aside from things that like reducing stress, reducing blood pressure, and benefits to overall mood, meditating can actually have long-lasting effects on the brain. In fact, people who have meditated for the long term are shown to have increased amounts of gyri on the surface of the brain. So the brain, if you have seen images of it, is quite wrinkly and these folds are there to increase the surface area so that there's more neurons and more information processing and coding can occur. If you have more folds, that could mean that you have more surface area, which could be associated with higher cognition. Another thing that was seen is that people who had meditated for the long term were shown to have increased white matter tracts and so increased connectivity throughout the brain. Another thing that was shown is that these long term meditators showed less cognitive decline and less associated structural changes with aging. What was shown is that even the meditators had structural changes as they aged but the structural changes were less and at the same time even though these changes were occurring their, cogn their cognitive scores remained higher some of them ev even scoring higher than younger aged participants. Another thing that is seen with meditation is that the volume of the hippocampus increases and so not only the volume of the hippocampus but also the density of the hippocampus increases meaning that there is neuroplastic changes occurring in the brain with meditation and so the hippocampus is an important brain region associated with memory and so higher density and a larger hippocampus would be associated with better performance on memory tests which was also shown in individuals after going through an experimental setup where they went through a meditation protocol for a certain amount of time. So it's not quite known why, but it has been seen that meditation is promoting plastic changes within the brain and it does have beneficial effects on cognition, on mood, stress, anxiety, and it helps to promote a feeling of calm which is good for your mental health and your overall well-being. Now you're probably thinking, well, all this sounds good, but I don't have time to meditate. Where am I supposed to find a counselor to help me meditate? But the good thing is that there are apps that have been shown to have the same effect as mindfulness-based stress reduction therapy. And so these apps are shown to have the same effect as therapies where you actually go in and sit with a counselor who guides you through meditation. So you don't have to invest a lot of money into it and it's something that can quickly change your state of being. Just five minutes a day can end up improving your cognition, your memory, and your overall brain health. So to recap, meditating can increase your interceptive abilities, it can increase your ability to focus and reduce the amount of daydreaming or mind wandering you experience. It's also been shown to increase gyration and white matter connections within the brain and reduce or provide resistance to the effects of aging. So with that being said, maybe you'll give meditation a try. If you have any thoughts on meditation or mindfulness, leave them down below. And we hope to see you next week with another video here on NeuroPsyQ. Thanks for watching and remember to like, comment, and subscribe.